It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to another episode of You Can Make It with David Farrell, the old fat guy. I have had an absolutely wonderful crop of potatoes this year, so I've got potatoes coming out my ears. That's good, but I don't want any to go to waste. So I need a way to use up some potatoes and store them well into the winter without them going bad. It's the same thing if you get a buy or a sale on a whole big bag of potatoes and you want to get a cheap price, but you don't want them to go to waste. So I'm going to make something called a frozen mashed potato casserole. It's quite simple to make and it's a good way to store potatoes. In addition to being a good way to store potatoes, it's also a recipe if you cut it in half, you can make it one day when you're having company the next day and just have to reheat it. Let's get into making a frozen mashed potato casserole. We'll start off with, you need three and a half kilograms or seven and a half pounds of peeled and chopped potatoes. Now I've done most of mine. I just got one left, so I'm just going to peel the potato. There we go. And then I want to cut it into chunks so it cooks a little bit faster. And put it in some water in a pot with the rest of the potatoes. Now, it's important, especially for me, that I add some salt to the water because I live at high altitude. And believe it or not, water boils lower temperature at high altitude than it does at sea level. So I'm just going to put a bit of salt in my water. just a teaspoon or so, just to give it a bit higher boiling point. And then I'm going to turn my cooktop on, bring it to a boil, put the lid on, and simmer it for 20 to 25 minutes until the potatoes are really soft. It might take a little less time if you're at a lower altitude, but start checking it at about 20 minutes and make sure that they're really soft, but I'll show you that when they're finished cooking. The potatoes actually cooked about 25 minutes to get fully cooked. Remember I told you about the higher altitude problem. And I just stick a fork in it and it should go in very, very easily. And that does. So now I just have to drain the water off my potatoes. So we'll just get the lid. Ah, here it is. Put it on and go over to the sink and drain the water off. So now that the potatoes are drained, I'm just going to clear a bit of space to work here and I'll be right back with you. I drained the water off of the potatoes and I set up my area here to add the remaining ingredients that I need to make the mashed potatoes. And guess what you do to start making mashed potatoes? You mash them. Good old fashioned potato master I find works better than almost anything. So I've been mashing the potatoes for two or three minutes. I want to get them nice and well mixed and crushed up. And we'll start putting some other ingredients in them. We're going to start off with some green onions. I've cut up 250 milliliters or one cup of green onions that I'm going to be adding to this, but only half of it. The other half are going to be used for garnish later. So we're just going to put half of the green onions in. And give it a little bit more of a mash. And then we're going to add some other ingredients. So what we're going to start with is 250 
milliliters of, or one cup of milk. 250 milliliters or one cup of cream cheese. A uh, 15 milliliters of Italian herb seasoning and five milliliters of coarse ground pepper. And one quarter cup or 50 milliliters of butter. And two eggs that you just want to beat up a little bit. Now you notice I put the eggs in last. That's because I got all those ingredients that'll be cooling the potatoes a bit so the eggs won't turn into scrambled eggs when I put them in. I'll just put them on top of those things. And we'll just beat those up a little bit with a fork. There we go. And then the, the eggs go in. And now we're going to mash that all together until it's nice and smooth. There we go, nice creamy mashed potatoes, as you can see. Now, what makes them a casserole is you cook them in a casserole dish. I'm going to have some of these for dinner tonight, so I'm actually going to put some in a casserole that I'll cook up for dinner. But what you can do with these is put it in a casserole and leave it in the fridge overnight and cook it tomorrow. Or you can put them in foil pans of any size you like and then cover them with foil and put them in the freezer and bring them out when you want to use them. Now, the trick is if you're cooking them unfrozen, in other words, you took them out of the freezer and you thawed them, or you're cooking them after making them, you cook them at 375 for 50 minutes. If you caught really short, you can take them right out of the freezer and put them in a 350 degree oven for 60 minutes, and it works out almost as well. So let's just scoop this into my casserole and get it ready for tonight because it's still got to be garnished. Now you can make it as thick or as thin as you want depending on how many people you want to serve from the casserole. It's just my wife and I so I'm not going to make this one too deep. That should about do the two of us. You can fill it right to the top if you want more. I'll put a little bit more in. I like my potatoes. So now that you've got it into a casserole, you're going to take out and put in, excuse me, I forgot something to get out here. I have here 175 milliliters or three quarters of a cup of cheddar. And remember the half of the onions we had before? Well, you want to sprinkle some of them over the casserole. And you save the rest for the other casseroles you put in the freezer or whatever. But you just want a little bit of color. So there we go. And then you want to sprinkle some of the grated shredded cheddar cheese. Just put some of that over your potatoes. There we go. Now, this will go into a 375 degree oven for 50 minutes and you'll get a nice crust on top from the cheese and I'll show you what it looks like then. I put the rest of my frozen mashed potato casserole in the foil pans, put the green onions and cheese over them and now they can go in the freezer so I can enjoy some in February if I want. And you can look, I had one here that I just cooked up for knitter and night and you can see it's got a lovely golden crust on it. Best part now is tasting it. Mmm. It has a delicious cheesy crust. The green onions give it a little bit of nice flavor. It's incredibly creamy. This casserole would go great with a roast or a chicken or anything. And best of all, you can make it. I have a good woman. I ain't good looking. But I do some cooking. I'm the old fat guy. So use that oven if you want some loving. 
like the old fat guy. Like the old fat girl.